You've probably all seen acids represented on TV and movies before. You know it's that green liquid that burns and corrodes everything it comes in contact with. Guys, the gargoyles do nothing! And in acids, our genesis is a base. When acids and bases come in contact, they neutralize one another. Acids aren't necessarily dangerous in real life. It all depends on how concentrated the acid is. There are three ways to define acids and bases. The first definition is quite narrow, while later definitions expanded to include new experimental evidence. The first definition is called the Arrhenius acid base definition, named after a Swedish scientist. This was the earliest definition from 1884, and it states that acids are compounds that will yield hydrogen ions, we call these protons, when dissolved in water, and bases are compounds that will yield hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, is an acid according to this definition, because when it is placed in water, it dissociates to give hydrogen ions and chloride ions. It is the hydrogen ions that are the acid part of the acid. Sodium hydroxide is a base according to this definition, because when it is placed in water, it dissociates to give hydroxide ions and sodium ions. The bronsted lowry acid base definition is a later definition named after a Danish and an English scientist who worked completely independently but published the same definition of acids and bases at the same time. Both found evidence that there were compounds that have all the properties of a base but do not include hydroxide ions, like ammonia. They modified the definition to be open and include these other bases. Acids are compounds that will donate a hydrogen ion to another compound, and bases are compounds that will accept that hydrogen ion. An example is HCl, which has an extra hydrogen ion, and it can be donated to ammonia, which can accept that hydrogen ion. When HCl loses the hydrogen ion, it becomes a chloride ion, and ammonia becomes ammonium, an H4, with a positive charge. Remember that hydrogen ions are positively charged. This is why ammonia becomes positively charged, because it gained an extra positive charge. These types of acid-base reactions are interesting because they are reversible, which means they can go in both directions, which is why we use these reversible arrows. When going to the right, HCl is an acid, and NH3 is the base. When going to the left, NH4 is the acid, and chloride is the base. So the acid becomes the base, and the base becomes the acid. There are these pairs of compounds that are created called conjugate acid-base pairs. They are pairs of compounds on opposite sides of chemical equations that differ by a single hydrogen ion. The third definition is called the Lewis definition. This is named after an American chemist. Lewis found that there were compounds that had all the properties of an acid, but did not contain any hydrogen ions. His definition says that acids are compounds that can accept a pair of electrons from another compound, and bases are compounds that donate that pair of electron to the other compound. Here's an example. The carbonate ion has an extra pair of electrons, signified by the negative charge, and the magnesium is lacking electrons, signified by the positive charge. So when carbonate donates its extra electrons to magnesium, we have a Lewis acid-base reaction. Now donating doesn't necessarily mean giving over to the other compound. It can also mean sharing the extra set of electrons with another substance. A common theme here that is really important in each of these definitions is that water must be involved. Acids aren't acids, and bases aren't bases, unless they're dissolved in water. The strength of an acid and base and the concentration of an acid and base are two concepts that are often confused. Strength and concentrations are not interchangeable terms. They're very different. Strength refers to the extent of dissociation of an acid or base compound. Dissociation is when the compound splits apart in water. Take table salt, for example, sodium chloride. When solid sodium chloride is stirred into water, it dissolves, or in other words, it dissociates into ions, sodium ions and chloride ions. Hydrochloric acid does the same thing. HCl splits apart to give hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Some acids and bases dissociate completely, while others only partially dissociate. The more an acid or base dissociates, the stronger it is. Hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid are all strong acids because they dissociate completely in water. Acetic acid is a weak acid because it only partially dissociates in water. That is, when it dissolves, only some of the acetic acid molecules split apart to give hydrogen ions. Remember, strength is not the same thing as concentration. I can still make a highly concentrated solution of a weak acid. Generally, with acids, we measure concentration of hydrogen ions, and with bases, we measure concentration of hydroxide ions in solution. 
Concentration is a measure of the moles of hydrogen ions or the moles of hydroxide ions per liter of solution. And the concentrations are generally really small. Take this example. 0 0.05 moles of hydrochloric acid are dissolved in 250 milliliters of water. What's the concentration of hydrogen ions? It's going to dissolve according to this chemical equation. Since hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, I can assume that all of the HCl dissociates in water. If 0 0.05 moles of HCl dissolved, I'm going to end up with 0 0.05 moles of hydrogen ions. Concentration is the moles of hydrogen ions divided by the volume of solution in liters. 0 0.05 moles of hydrogen ions divided by 0 0.250 liters gives a 0.2 molar solution. This is a pretty small number, and many acids can have even smaller concentrations in the order of 10 to the negative 3 or even 10 to the negative 6 molar. Because concentrations are so small, scientists came up with a better way to express the concentration of an acid or a base. For acids, it's called pH, and for bases, it's called pOH. These are logarithmic scales that take these tiny amounts and turn them into large whole numbers. To calculate pH, we use the formula pH equals the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. And to calculate the pOH, we use this formula. POH equals the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide ions. So if the concentration of hydrogen ions is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 5 molar, the pH would be 4.35. And if the concentration of hydroxide ions is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 11 molar, the pOH would be 10.9. What do these numbers mean? pH and pOH are just scales used to measure how acidic or basic a solution is. Here's the scale for pH. In the center of the scale, pH of 7, a solution is neutral. It's neither acidic or basic. Low pH is acidic and high pH is basic. The lower the pH, the more acidic. And the higher the pH, the more basic the solution is. pOH is opposite. In the center of the pOH scale, 7, this is neutral. Low pOH is basic and high pOH is acidic. It's the flipped version of the pH scale. pH and pOH are related to each other. In a given solution, we can describe its pH or its pOH. They are related because if we add the pH of a solution to its pOH, we always get the same answer, 14. So if the pH of a solution is 2, what's the pOH of the solution? Well, the pOH must be 12 because 2 plus 12 is equal to 14. I mentioned earlier in the video that an acid and a base will neutralize each other when they come in contact with one another. The reaction between an acid and a base is commonly called a neutralization reaction. In general, acids and bases react in this way. Acid plus base will give salt and water. Here's an example. The hydrogen from the acid switches places with the potassium ion and creates a compound with hydroxide. This forms a compound with two hydrogens and one oxygen, H2O, water. Then we create the salt, potassium chloride. Salt is another name for ionic compound. We aren't necessarily talking about table salt, sodium chloride, when we say salt. When the acid and base neutralize each other, we usually end up with a neutral solution where the pOH and pH have become 7.0.